It's more dry your eyes. Why are yeah. you crying? Dry your Why eyes. You cry? I thought that was a uh, fuck you, Rhea. Fuck you. But uh, there goes our meal ticket. <laughs> That's what I said. Well, Marcus, well, the numbers are down anyway. We might get you anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, numbers are down. And the, the show is in the toilet again, guys. We're back. We're back at the bottom. <laughs> After I, I spit on everybody on the way up and slap the people down, <laughs> I'm going right so back down to see to those same humble. people. You did huh? try and stay humble on the way up. <laughs> I tried. I tried to be humble. I tried. But damn it, the world is on this revenge door. I feel like our channel, this was us. We were Liv Morgan on the left doing WrestleMania and all the buzz. And now we're Rhea Ripley on the right. Now that all the buzz is gone. <laughs> Welcome to today's show. I'm Lord Manny Hayes. He is Marcus the Grand Finale. <laughs> Don't worry about how I did my intro today, okay, Manny? I'm tired, okay? I'm frustrated. I can't, I can't charge my phone. I'm having a <laughs> rough week. So people... We're not going to get into why he can't charge his phone, but let me tell you, it is all his fault. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Come on. That's like saying I had an affair and the second the child that I had an affair with is my fault as well. No, it's a no, I'm just saying, person issue. I'm just saying you have had multiple ways to get, get, your, get, get your hands on a charger, but your stubbornness has led you to where you are right now. It's not stubbornness, Manny. It's righteousness, okay? <laughs> righteousness. I am right. Screw you, delivery man, for not bringing my cord. That's all I'm saying. Screw you. Bring it in. Who brings a cord at four in the morning? I could have been asleep. I wasn't. Obviously, Wait, who does deliveries at four in the morning? Yeah, the delivery estimated time was four to eight in the morning. Clearly, it wouldn't be four in the morning with someone <laughs> banging on your door. Oh, I can't get to your gate. It's four in the morning. Fuck off. Go home. Get a real job. <laughs> but leave my cord. <laughs> or come yeah, so back later. Bastards. This is all Marcus's fault. This is all his fault. 100% his fault. But what wasn't her fault was Rhea Ripley being thrown into a wall and having to vacate the WWE World Women's Championship. This is horrible. This is a disaster. Holy calamity. I thought nothing of that attack by Liv Morgan. I thought nothing of, of any injury that could have occurred in that scenario. But the reports on Monday or early or late Sunday was that Rhea Ripley will have to vacate her title due to an injury. And I was thinking, man, she must have really tore her neck on some live show or something. But no, it was the backstage segment that I thought nothing about, and it broke my goddamn heart because there goes our money. No chance. Yeah, there goes our no money. booty cheeks on yeah. the indies. On the I thought. I thought that uh, she was injured because – how physical her match with Becky Lynch was on WrestleMania night one. Yeah. She didn't necessarily do much on the raw after mania. She kind of just spoke in a backstage segment. Uh, yeah. She didn't. No, she uh, and, then she just, and then she lifted up the title and stuff like that. Um, I, and then I thought the, I thought this uh, attack of being thrown into the wall was a bit more of a cover up for whatever she may have got injured during WrestleMania. But it seems like they're citing that it was the Liv Morgan attack. Uh, segment from last week um she comes out she tells everyone that she's been sidelined because of the attack from Liv Morgan and now has to vacate the title she calls Liv Morgan's revenge tour stupid and she yeah. would have had a lot more respect for her if she came out and went face to face however Marcus on an episode of Raw on July 23rd uh this was Ooh. when Rhea Ripley decided to blindside Liv Morgan and take her out and, t and yes. take out her arm. That was the episode where Rhea Ripley was somehow in the back and then somehow trans teleported <laughs> to, oh, yes. to the side of the steps where she took out Liv Morgan making her entrance to the ring and then yes. did, did her arm in with the chair. Um, so you're I a hypocrite, this. Rhea Ripley. I love you, 
But you are great. <laughs> yeah, you're born and great. Uh, Rhea's right. I mean, uh, Liv is right and justified in her quote unquote revenge tour in her attack. It makes sense. But, however, I like Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Therefore, I side with her. I don't care who's more justified. Similar in the hip hop beef, ready? I do not side with Drake because I like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, The Weeknd, and even to the, the to an extent, oh, the raw the boss Rick Ross, who's oh. a bit racist right now, who's a bit <laughs> racist. Him and the Rock are out of control with their racism. With him calling Drake white boy and The Rock just calling everybody boy. And I don't like the way he says it. I don't care if it is the John Cena. <laughs> it's out of control. Uh, she warns whoever wins her title when she comes back. She is coming back for blood. Uh, Liv Morgan comes out. She's held back by security. Rhea approaches security and is also held back. Um, she beats up security. Um, and then the One judgment guy. day hug it. Yeah. They, the Judgment Day hug it out. Damian Priest gives her a pep talk, and she says, keep Judgment Day on top. I believe Damian Priest signed a deal with a devil. <laughs> he's a champion. Took out Rhea Ripley as champion. Yeah, I mean, this is only good shit like this happened to Tom Brady, I feel like. It does not happen to someone like Damian Priest, who becomes world <laughs> champion, is now the de facto leader of Judgment Day. He's booking fit in matches. He's telling Tom and JD what to do, and he's running them to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> this man uh, is a goon at best. He should not be in charge. <laughs> this is like watching... Uh, um, what's the bald guy in the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> Damn it. What bald guy? The bald guy, Strider's number two. Bebop. The guy that goes, hmm. No, 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 in the movies, in the movies. Oh, I can't remember that. Anyway, it'd be like that guy running the show. But if you want to go correct, it'd be like if Bebop and Rocksteady was running the Foot Clan, and it's horrible. I don't want this. Um, then, um, Liv Morgan in the back, uh, was saying she doesn't understand the reaction as she is not the bad guy here. Where was all the sympathy for when Rhea took her out as previously mentioned? Um, Liv says Shut it's up, karma Liv. and Rhea got exactly what she deserved. And the best part is this isn't the end of the Liv, Liv Morgan revenge tour. It ends with Liv Morgan being the world women's world champion. I don't know who I hate more, her or Jack Perry at this point. Jack Perry. It's always Jack Perry. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, um, you know. So this graphic came up, Marcus, and um, for some reason, the internet are trying to run with this angle. So if you look at this, uh -huh. um, some people believe, because you know all the random glitches and all this uh, Uncle Howdy bullshit that's going on on Raw and WWE television right now. Yeah. They believe the way the light is shining on that on the WWE logo at the bottom where the uh, thing crosses, it looks like an A. What? That looks like an A. It does. It looks like an A is shining. Okay. It? Yeah, they it does. Alexa Bliss is going to win that world heavyweight world women's. Oh, title. get out of here! <laughs> get out of here with that conspiracy theory. Get out of here. Possible, but I doubt it. Um, okay, let's get some of these out. Um, oh my god, the finally a new tag team championships. Those ugly coin belts have been hideous. I feel like those titles are just an upgrade of those coin belts, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let real buddy get married and enjoy their time. Oh, no, no, I will not. Maybe Rhea has a choice at this moment in her life. This is when she realized, you know what, I should not end up with buddy. I should end up with Dom. <laughs> I hope they don't have uh, Becky Lynch, I'm assuming, win the belt. Because there's only one Bex I report to, and that's David Beckham. Um, wins the belt again. <laughs> and somebody else or Natty, please. Natty ain't winning shit. What is going to happen now? Money kept Tom and Nick relevant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seamus. Seamus is in the same Oh, we're, we're ahead. This is way ahead. No, it's not. Sheamus and Ivar is the next. This is the first match of the uh, night. Oh, okay. Let's, let's talk about Sheamus. Came back a bit doughy. So I was joking with Ryan as it was happening, and I was like, 
All right. Sheamus is coming back next. I can't wait. I miss Sheamus. But I told Ryan, I looked at Ryan, I said, but wouldn't it be great if he came out completely out of shape? (laughs) He came out looking like fucking Santa Claus with red hair. Well, what happened is you talked this into existence and now we have this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but you know what? For a man that's out of shape, he's still kind of in shape. Like it was gone. Like you can see the doughiness. Like he looked like he was about to be. He needs to be some bread put in the oven. Like it's just he looked very doughy. Oh, you, you trying to say like if he pil- laid out in the sun, he turned into bread? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if he wanted to audition to be the Pillsbury Doughboy, he could just shave his head and we'd be there. But he looked like old man Sheamus, and I was like, "This is Sheamus I'm wearing on the Indies." Just like, oh, he's out of shape, but just so I need that stomach to get a little bigger. He was that's not Bubba Ray Ray shape. Now that's 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 a disservice to Sheamus. He is ne- he, Sheamus will never be in Bubba Ray Dudley shape. I want to <laughs> say he's in maybe you know an old reference here for those who aren't old enough. Ezekiel Jackson shape. Where it looked nah, like he had muscles, nah, 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 but nah, nah, nah. you kind of have that nice round belly. I think he's early rotund Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nailed it. That is that's perfect. He is. But you know what? He is almost 50. If not, he is 50. Let the, he's it's time to let it go. You can't keep up his fitness regimen forever. He's older, he got hurt. I'm happy he's back. He was sucking a lot of wind. I'm sure he's going to get in better ring shape. Even though he was wrestling Ivar, and I'm like, that's a tough man to come back to Ivar. Yeah, and this, it, you know, when he returned, he had a banger. I don't care if he was out of shape or not, and huffing and puffing through that match. He put, it yeah. on, he put on a banger. He put on a banger, <laughs> yeah. and then after the match, he assaults Pat McAfee and Mike Cole at ringside. Yeah. <laughs> so my favorite thing about this and call me a WWE Mark or not, I do appreciate them bringing up that Men's Warehouse has sponsored Raw tonight. And Michael Cole has been wearing Men's Warehouse suits, allegedly, for the past 30 years or whatever it's been for his WWE run. And to see a sweaty, fat, spider <laughs> disgusting smelling Sheamus, who just wrestled Ivar, who probably just is sweaty, and mix all that sweat Oh, Michael Cole and him just ruining his men's warehouse suit. I felt like made me laugh enough. Yeah, but I feel like he could replace that men's warehouse suit very quickly and for a great price. We ain't yeah. sponsored by Men's Warehouse, but if you want Not to sponsor enough. us, send us send an email to the shop at gmail.com. <laughs> we are willing to sell out for anything. I don't <laughs> care. Uh then out comes Triple H, talks about a new era again which began at WrestleMania 40. Adam Pearce calls out the orphan truth. Triple H congr- congratulates them and says they will be known as the World Tag Team Champions and unveils the new titles for Raw. Our truth calls our Triple H a magician and then <laughs> says he sees right through his Tommaso Ciampa act. <laughs> yeah, see you are Tommaso Ciampa and then Triple H. So uh, what do you think of these titles? I think the quote, the great one, Manny. Finally, <laughs> you changed the title because it's the exact same thing as the world title, but it's now a circular, like it's the penny belt. They kept the penny shape, so they are just like pound coins to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they look so much better when they when they build it. When I was just so happy, I was so happy. Oh yes, there you go. <laughs> you can't see it. We can't see it, Manny. It's fine. But we get the, we get the drift. You are the tag team championships and coin for it. But it's so it's it's an upgrade. It's a complete upgrade. I think we should have marched to the street to celebrate the death of those spinning tag team titles. <laughs> We're never going to see it. Coin. <clears throat> oh, okay. You guys got those. We have the penny. And anyway. I'm glad those pit, that, that those titles are dead forever, and these are so much better. I can't wait to win the SmackDown titles, which will probably look exactly the same, but with blue oh, font or whatever. I think, I think those ones are going to resemble the Universal titles. Mm. So, and because we, these uh, ones resemble uh, re, uh, these ones resemble title. that. Like if you look, if you look at that, it resembles the, the way yeah. the women's men's titles look like. 
it resembles that. So I'm I'm guessing on Friday they'll 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 announce a new titles for um A Town Down Under and yeah. um it will look similar to that. I think I did a giant W. <laughs> Whatever the case is, death to the penny and nickel titles. I'm glad they're dead. It's been way too long. Of all the titles that needed an upgrade, these were these these lasted the entire way, and they've been hideous for the longest time. I pray I'm glad Triple H finally listened. <laughs> um, I mean, Tommaso Ciampa, which made me also last when it's like when they cut to uh, the entrance of DIY and uh, uh, they Archie forgot to turn off Triple H. H. But is that Triple H? That's Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> the second uh, was hilarious and awesome. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And then um, we have the number one contenders match DIY versus the Creed versus the New Day. The match was pretty good. Um, DIY are number one contenders again after hitting meat in the middle on Woods. Um, do you know what? It, but that was it, it. Surprisingly, even though I hate triple threats and I hate triple threat tag team matches and I hate tag team matches, wasn't that yeah, bad? I think of you hate team? DIY. <laughs> I don't point. hate DIY. Oh, okay, okay. I'm starting to dislike the Creeds hmm. because they have oh, incredible I... offense that should put away people. Yeah, but people just keep kicking out of their bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like again, you always cite Julius Green, athletic freak, and all that. They can do all this, but they never win. And I understood the idea of DIY winning this week. You're going to give Awesome Truth a nice, solid win. DIY is not beating them, and then you saved a real match with either Creed's or New Day for France or something. Yeah, because just that thing with the Creed when they did that uh, double, uh, ju- the double double suplex. Yeah, um, that realistically should have put everyone away because they pinned everyone at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> everyone know. was confused on re- Michael Cole, Priest, uh, not Priest, uh, R Truth, Miz were all confused on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That should have been it. Nope. 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 Yeah, it's just—it's like, always that's funny that's... when shit confuses people. Where it's like, ah, oh, that's yeah. a, that's that's missed. Yeah, so the Creed should have won that, but then um, Marcus, I don't like having when when I have to add certain amount of additional stars to a match uh, when certain moves are hit. And our current move of the month, it seems like, it happened during Candice LeRae and Indy Harwell versus Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile. Where Maxine Dupree did a bridging fisherman suplex, aka the perfect plex. I gave this match 12 stars. <laughs> <laughs> so, Betty, do you remember the movie The Dark Knight? It's spoilers for The Dark Knight, guys. I know everybody on the planet has seen it basically, but spoilers for The Dark Knight for those who have it. Do you remember The Dark Knight? Yeah. When Batman. And Commissioner Gordon have to make a decision of who they're going to save, either Rachel or Two Face. Right? Yes, yes. And in the scene, and Batman thought he was saving Rachel, but ended up being Harvey Dent. And he got and Harvey yells, Why you? Who about me? Don't do me. And so that was me screaming when I saw Maxine Dupree do the perfect flex with the bridge. <laughs> Why you? No! Why? Because I knew it wasn't a finisher, and it's not the best wrestler in the world. She's never going to win with it, but it was perfect. It was beautiful, and I went, oh, Do you know what? She did it. She did it incredibly well, and then bridged perfectly. Yes! Everything about it was perfect. And I went, oh, (laughs) not her, though. (laughs) <laughs> it's just going to be a move. We're never going to see it that good again. And once people are kicking out of her perfect plex, no one's going to be able to do it and not yeah. kick out. It's ruined. It's ruined. Uh, Indy gets so, a hit out, as Ross. As you gave it 20 and... stars, I gave the show, I gave the whole match a strike, even with Candace yeah. and Indy. <laughs> no, because Indy gets a head out of us and gets on the same page as Candace and decides winning is better than being the good guy. So she is now on board with Candace's bullshit. Therefore, I feel like the 12 stars is just. 
<laughs> you can't tell you can't tell on my rating scale what I gave for the fisherman suplex or the perfect plex. <laughs> <laughs> because also I got Candice LeRae bullshit this week as well. So additional stars everywhere. <laughs> can, can I tell you when she made her decision? When Indy made her decision, I'm gonna be evil. It's during the entrance when Candace did not do the high five, the, <laughs> the, the way thing. And she was like, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Why you got to embarrass me like that? And I was <laughs> like, why did she do that? You know, we could have been, we could have worked this out. Why are we even teaming? And then Indy was like, you know what? It's time to get on the same page. At that moment, she was like, I'm done with this bullshit. I'm happy she's uh, on the same page. You know what? Back to 20 star match. <laughs> 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 got a perfect Wait, you adding your stars to my stars. Therefore, yeah. now it's a 20 star. Now it's a 20 star match. <laughs> Try to top that, Osprey Danielson. <laughs> <laughs> we move into Priest at the back, firing up Dom and JD into beating Andrade while he's also telling Finn he needs to prince. He needs to prince to teach Jey Uso the meaning of uh, of uh, the meaning of the word loss. And at Backlash, he will teach him the meaning of pain. And then we lead into Dominic Mysterio versus Andrade. The match, was, the match was good. Yeah. Can I add Priest's Mr. Lie? Uh, I'm going to teach him pain. It's, I thought this line should have been punishment, but you know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was really upset he didn't say that. I was like, isn't the word punishment? Aren't you that guy? Aren't you the, aren't you the punishment guy? No, nah, because I don't think people he, he I don't think he wants people reminded that he was that fat before. <laughs> he was Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> like he looked like a, he looked like a sad fat vampiro. <laughs> yeah, but they put all the footage up anyway. They put it up. <laughs> like his video package for being world champion was a bit inspiring, but it was also like there's that moment of, so what happened between here? How did this guy become that guy? That's not the same guy. <laughs> yeah. I believe I believe that guy ate the current guy. <laughs> yeah. I thought that Priest was the more, I thought they were showing footage of Priest's less successful brother who, who's in jail right now. And he's <laughs> like, I got to carry him for the family. That's what I felt was going on in that package. Um, so this match was really good. What did it you was. make of? Because you're not ve- you're not a fan of um, the uh, what's it called? The Canadian destroyer. Canadian destroyer. But it was done in Canada, and it was done on the hardest part of the ring. He fell <laughs> out of the not... ring. He fell out of the ring. He had some time to recover as he did struggled he? to get him in the ring, and then he pinned him. Dom looked flustered. Tried to go for the six one nine, and then walked into that awkward back elbow which i hate because it never looks flush it just looks wrong every time it looks like a botch every time it <laughs> does but that's the beauty of it It looks like oh he got him he killed him <laughs> um so what did, make, make, what, did make the what did you make of the finish well i'm going to take some of the stars from uh maxine dupree and candice Lorray and all them. oh that's a lock you can't take stars from there anymore that's a lock i want to take their stars away because I want to also take stars away from Andrade <laughs> just to balance this out. How dare they do the Canadian Destroyer on the hardest part of the ring? And then you may say he had time to recover. I felt like he got that ring right away and was like, it's over. <laughs> I'm done with this bullshit. Um, you know I hate it. I can't see two of my favorite all-time moves on the same show <laughs> just be disgrace like that. Two strikes on the show. Two strikes. Uh, Both my Ricochet. favorite moves in wrestling. The scrapes. Ricochet makes a save after Andrade is jumped by Big Head JD after he got the win. Um, if you thought my star rating for the last match, uh, for the Candice LeRae match was bad, watch what happens here. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea Green and Piper Niven take on Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Um, so, um, Piper Niven catches Katana Chance out of the air, gives yep. her a fall away slam. And you know how I feel yes. about fall away slams. Marcus, if she if she got up and did this, but there was no time. There was no time. <laughs> time. Five hundred stars. <laughs> I love a good fall away slam as well. And I thought 
Harper Devin, who is a showcase, but I'm glad that Chelsea got her girl with her. And she she's able to they're fighting. They're gonna fight. They gotta win. I didn't know who was actually gonna win this match. I thought for sure they were losing because they've lost the last two. <laughs> yeah. I feel they're gonna lose this real tag team. Chelsea has one to complain about. But no, they picked him to win and I, I appreciate that. I was like, oh, yeah. that's nice of them. It was a nice it was a nice little finish at the end where um so fall away slam. Yeah. And then Piper sees that the pin's happening. I thought she wasn't going to make it in time. Because <laughs> <laughs> that referee was on two just as she was coming off the rope. <laughs> yeah. And then Piper was going to have the hot ass. Yeah. yeah. And, then che- and then Chelsea gets a pit in. I thought that was a really good finish for that match. So, yeah. Uh, it's not 500 it's, it's stars. It's but... <laughs> this whole Raw. Oh, no, uh, yeah. The follow-away slam. I'm, again, this Raw was just playing the hits on moves I love. Follow-away slam falls in that category. Just goes in there. What are they going to give me next? A back body drop? I can't wait. Can't wait for the next hip toss. Or an arm drag. <laughs> Good old-fashioned backbreaker. <laughs> right on the knee. Nah, you got to wait. You got to wait for a Roddy match for that. <laughs> nah, nah. I don't want Roddy to do it. He's too small. <laughs> well, he spams backbreakers. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He has a million of them, but I want a big person just to be like, you know what? Yeah, right on the knee. It's you wait, over. you wait, you wait till tonight when Oba Femi breaks it out on Ivar. Oh, <laughs> I may cry. I may cry a little bit. <laughs> he breaks it out. Or if Trick does a moonsault off the top of the cage, these are the moves that mark that pop me all the time. Moonsault off the cage is always good because I'm always fearful for their Trick life. Trick could do that. Trick ain't got that in him. Mellow, Trick got that in him. <laughs> nah. Trick has got moonsault off the top of the cage. He's too big to do a moonsault. That's what they said about Ivar, Betty. That's what they said about Ivar. Now Ivar look at you now. Ivar is a small fat man. Ivar is a small fat man at cartwheels. That's also true. <laughs> like, I, I, like, if you go back to last week, the sheer panic in his eyes when he realized he was in skinny jeans and he had to do a springboard. <laughs> <laughs> like you saw him run. Go back and watch you. You see him run. What am I about to do here? I don't think I should be doing this. <laughs> you know what? I'm always snapping. I'm always snapping, but here we go. <laughs> Talk about leaps of faith. That was the biggest leap of faith. Yes. I'm gonna show that to kids in school about you, if you what do you think this man's gonna do? That's inspiration. You get this. Right. Believe in your dreams. Believe in your dreams. <laughs> this fat man thought he could fly, and he did. This man ble- I believe this man can do her karatas off the top rope as well. So <laughs> believe in your uh, dreams with his Uggs on. Uh, Cody comes out. Uh, he talks about Seth being a shield, and and he is the man. He's a man of his word, and thanks him. He thinks the Rock has a lot more matches left in him, and the Rock is going to make. The Rock said he's going to make him bleed again, and there's no amount of training that could, that the Rock can do to stop the fact that if Cody's going to bleed, the Rock is going to bleed with him. The oh. bloodline he is confused about of the indru- in- introduction of Tamatonga by order of the Tribal Chief when Roman Reigns is nowhere to be found. He brings out Jay Uso. He thanks him for helping out with the bloodline, offers his services against the Judgment Day, but Jay Uso said he's got to do it by himself, and then Cody ends it with "Until we eat again." Yeah. So uh I saw the big card mess. I think uh somebody was upset and they were tired of these Cody promos on weekly raw. Uh, but like, you can't they, they, they've been two like one person. There's like there's two. two. No, there's like no no there's been two of these promos on Raw because there's only been two yeah. after WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to say they're completely wrong. One, I thought the silent promo, and I appreciate Cody giving me the weekly updates, the weekend updates of what's going on in wrestling and, you know, how Seth and whatever, but whatever. You can't have it both ways. You can't be upset that Roman didn't show up to shows as your world champion, and Cody shows up to all shows, and he plans yeah. on wrestling for the title. He, the champ is around. We finally have a WWE champion that's around, and you're going to complain that he's around? You can't do that. You can't do that. Um, yes, he has nothing going for right now. He has to wait to smack down, which is his actual show. Yeah. Uh, Jey Uso versus Finn Balor. 
I thought this was good as well. Um, they didn't yeah. they didn't do any special moves that are on my um, list, so four stars. <laughs> there was a big splash. I was worried about man if they kicked out the big splash. <laughs> I would be really upset. No, uh, no, they did not uh, hinder anything in the night. It was just a solid match. Yeah. But the real story goes to um, the post match. I don't care about the yeet downs that he escaped, but I appreciate the camera work in the back. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Anyway, moving on. <laughs> My feeling, I can, I'm going to bottle that emotion in just like everything I bottle in. Anyway, he escapes the Judgment Day and their plan to attack them. Priest is upset for a little bit, but then we go on a journey. We go on an adventure. We go through all Lord of the Rings movies as this man walks the Mordor. <laughs> can, I, can, can I just point out, a man that gets tired just going like this on his way to the ring should not be doing a long-ass walk up the stairs and then a long walk outside towards Sami Zayn, who was waiting for him, looking up, looking up at uh, whatever it was. The entrance, just the entrance. But no, uh, they were looking up at Vince McMahon's brass ring is what I saw in the comments in the community page. <laughs> <laughs> it's still up there. It's still up there. Can anybody reach it? I think we can actually reach it now. I think it's, I think we're allowed to actually reach for it. <laughs> but uh, this long walk, I thought it was awkward. Yes, because you don't know why are we following him, and you're thinking, "Oh, the bloodline's gonna jump him." But no, yeah. there's some random guy comes at him, and Jay dismisses of him really quick. Really oh, yeah, because quick. he stood in front of him trying to get a selfie, as if Jay was gonna stop for him to take a selfie with him. Yeah, get the fuck uh, out so of the Jay way. just him. Get out of the way. We're doing TV, yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah. So Sammy goes, you know. The first time I ever went to a wrestling show was in this arena right here. And I'm going to go into this arena like it's the first time I ever did and come through that door and show you the best wrestling town in the world. This is all one shot as it rotates around and you see him hyped up through the crowd. I mean, through the, through the concessions. Who Who's in the concessions already at the main event? I feel like you people need to get kicked out the arena, whoever was there. Oh, uh, and then all the way through there, and then you get one of the loudest uh, pops of the night, just, or in general, of the year probably, of Sammy just touring through Montreal's crowd, basically doing a John Moxley, <laughs> but with 15,000 people, a full arena, basically. It's essentially a full arena doing a John Moxley, which rarely happens these days. And it was really nice. It was just, it was effort. It had me hyped up. I saw it right before I went to work. And I was telling Manny, I had a similar walk. It was just very lonely and dark. But yeah, I was, was ready. More, I was like, was let's go! His mom is a Jay Uso walk with no people. <laughs> yeah, no people or contacts. <laughs> but also wondering, where is this going? <laughs> so I'm high. I thought it was one of the greatest entrances of all time. I just thought it was just, it was perfect. I don't know if there's... It, I, I, if not the greatest, more one of the more memorable entrance of all time. I just thought, like, oh, shit, I'm never gonna sure. forget that. Like, there's been other entrances that are gonna overshadow this, but yeah, sure. I give I give you one of the best raw entrances. Yeah, like the crowd was hot all night. Anyway, like even Cody got like a five minute ovation for no reason. <laughs> I mean, I guess Cody, he kept trying to. Sure. I get, yeah, I guess my theory of uh, people wanted to see Roman lose more than Cody winning is off. So the people in Montreal really loved themselves from Cody. It was yeah, like, but I'm Canada happy fans can't be trusted anyway. Yeah, as 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 Jerry the King Lawler would call it, Bizarro Land. <laughs> <laughs> um. So during uh, Sammy's entrance, we cut to the back where Bronson Reed is throwing out threats to both Chad and Sami Zayn. Uh, yeah. The problem, the problem I had with this match. Was nothing that they did. They used the time very well for what they what they were given, and the match was still good. Yeah. And I know down the line, given the ending of this match, there'll be there'll be others. Um, I just felt like when Gunther and Chad had their big match for the IC title on Raw last year, it was given more time, and 
I, I, it, it, just, and it felt special. This doesn't, this didn't feel special. The turn felt special, where he German suplexed Sammy in front of his wife, and she yeah. was still reaching out for him. He's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I think this was different than the Gunther match is that you believe Chad had a chance to beat Gunther. I think there was a part of you that believed Chad could beat Gunther. We have no doubt Sammy is not losing tonight. The way yeah. he got introduced, the way that crowd's reacting, I just felt like we just felt like chapter one of the story that they were telling and whatnot, and it wasn't that big feel. But my favorite part was the ending when uh, Sammy was going to his wife, Khadijah, and his family. I'm assuming his father, maybe brother-in-law, I don't know. His father These was there. People. His son wasn't. Yeah. Who, you know, all his family. I kind of wanted when Chad gave him the German suplex, Khadijah would have flew with him. <laughs> he he a a what? I thought that would have been hilarious. I'm like, oh, he's horrible. He's horrible. He's going too far. But uh, I like the Chad turn. I like that he's going to be took it more serious. And you can tell, I'm going to say it officially, the Dark Lord is officially gone and Chad Gable is getting a push at the main event of Monday Night Raw. Let's go, Shorty G. <laughs> Woo! He rise. <laughs> he rise. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was raw. Um, I I did like the way it ended with the ankle lock on the top rope. Yeah, that looked dis- I love- that looked disgusting. <laughs> yeah, and I like that it was just out of time where we couldn't see more. And like, if I saw more of it, I would have probably questioned. Does this really hurt more than an ankle lock on the mat? But who cares? <laughs> That's because you're hanging. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> like you're dangling. Sammy was slapping that pose. Oh, yeah, he's. Was... That will hurt way more because your body weight's pulling you down. He's twisting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably does. But I enjoyed the ending. I liked that the icy title made him in the show. It did, but it did make me question one thing: Damian Priest. Your title does not need to exist, and I wish the Rock threw it, took it away from Seth, and burned it. The Intercontinental title is good enough to close out Monday Night Raw. That should be the main title, and Sammy should be <laughs> the main champion on Monday Night Raw. Chad should be going for the main Intercontinental title of Monday Night Raw. We need to get well, rid of this world is- title once and for all. Your statement is wrong. And I'll what? tell you why it's wrong. Because you said The Rock needed to take this title away and burn it. Yes. Well, you, uh, I believe you were part of the episode with me and Ross in that, when we took a trip back to 1998. <laughs> the Rock should have taken that title and threw it off a bridge. Marcus, not burn it, <laughs> threw it off a bridge. He has priors. He likes throwing things off bridges. <laughs> People too. People too. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you agree with me because, right? Sammy should be the world champion. The Intercontinental title should be the main title on Raw. It's more he prestigious. Should, Gunther but... built that up. Ben Seth he should, is. but like I think, like I said before, the I, I, I understand your argument for there should just be one undisputed world champion in WWE and, that, and yeah. that's Cody's belt. But if you don't have that, the likes of people like Damian Priest the likes of when it was just the WWE title, Big E would have never been able to rise to that level and have world champion against their name. Because if you look at it and you go the handover, if you hand over the title from the from Roman Reigns and you gave that to Damian Priest, not the same level. He Damian Priest yeah. is good, but he ain't on that Roman level. Cody is like there. He's nowhere close to that Roman level, but Cody is like there. But they yeah. reach it down here. <laughs> but you, yeah, you see this gap. You see the gap. There's there's Cody Rose belt. Um, then there's the Intercontinental title, somewhere in between there, Gunther's title. And then there's a bunch of crap in between there. And then there's Priest. And it's no disrespect to Priest and his world title. It's just you see the levels of, oh my God, Cody's in this huge ovation. And then Priest was yeah. out there later just trying to jump Jay Uso. And it's kind of like, hey, there's Priest. <laughs> the thing, the thing that I need that needs to happen though after after this draft is specifically Cody shouldn't be showing up on both shows. No, nah, he just I showing up. I, he need he needs to be a show exclusive kind of thing. He shouldn't should be showing up on both shows because Priest actually looked like 
Priest actually looked like the Intercontinental Champion <laughs> when, yes. when when they were jumping um Jay. Like he was just standing yeah. there watching it happen and like he doesn't he hasn't really been given a been able to do anything in the last two two weeks of Raw. Yeah. Um so yeah. like he and and Cody's been given way more time on Raw when he's not even a Raw but he is a Raw, he's technically a SmackDown guy now, we have holding that title. But he was given yeah. way more time in the last two weeks than Damien has actually had, even though Damien yeah. has featured more on, on the show. Even uh, Rhea Ripley has been featured more than Damien Priest in this little bit of time. Of uh, yeah. But, you know, she's been champion or whatever, but even her relinquishing the belt was more important than Priest at this point. And, you know, so it's a tough spot for Priest to be in, but it was a tougher spot for Seth to be in, who didn't really elevate. The, you know, he did his best. You can do your best to elevate a title, but I only see one. There's only one ring to rule them all. You can have a million yeah. of these rings. There's only one, and it's the one Cody has. And it's shiny, and it's nice, and the people want that. That's the main title. Okay, so I've just taken a sip of drink because I know what's about to happen. It's the man Damn that writes right. paragraphs in the chat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> essays, man. The essays, but they're multiple. Daniel Price! You yes. can't spell Mordor without Dom. Maybe Dom's actually Sauron. Mofo's gonna start cutting promos as a giant flaming eye serpent eye. <laughs> They're just as much, they get booed as much. I think it's Southron when it came down to rap. I think he would have got equally as booed as Dom does. No, oh, no boo Dom, you, Dom, Dom has got more evil the longer the mullet has grown. So, like it, I'm not seeing an eye, I'm seeing the eye of mullet. Wait a minute. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you say it's the mullet that's making him evil? I think it's the mustache. I think it's the mustache. No, it's the mullet. The, the, the weary weak mustache he's trying to grow in. When he was I teaming with his dad, more evil. when he was teaming with his dad, he had short hair, short back and sides. Yeah. The longer that the longer that mullet kept grew, and the longer the influence of Rhea Ripley, that man has gone evil. <laughs> yeah, the more Eddie cut, the more Eddie comes out of him. The more the Eddie, he looks more like Eddie's son. Appreciate Dom not winning the custody battle. <laughs> uh, Daniel Price, if it was John Moxley, he'd have stopped by the concession stand, gotten a hot dog, bladed himself, used the blood to, like ketchup, <laughs> and you know, on the way to the ring. How is this? this man needs to stop bleeding? <laughs> yeah, he bleeds all the time. I saw John Boxy at the grocery store trying to cut himself open looking for peas. Like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Daniel Price, they need less belts, not more. One man, one men's and one women's world champion. One set of tag belts. Let the US title be the main belt for one show. Yeah, I, I mean, I see, I see, I see the point for it. The main titles work both shows. I see the point for it. I do see the point for it. And then at that point, you may get more storytelling of non-feuds. Like non championship yeah. feuds, but there are a lot of titles out there that are not even being defended, which is the other problem. <laughs> Women's tag titles. Um, I mean, I just want less belts, just less belts everywhere. I, I, you know, NXT can live in its own world, whatever, but the main roster can have just less belts. I, 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 I prefer less. If see more procedures, if there was. In the NBA, if you could win the uh, the trophy, the finals, you know, trophy, I don't want to blanking out on what it's called. I know it every single time I think about it other than right now. Yeah. <laughs> Larry O'Brien, the Larry O'Brien trophy. If more people could just be like, oh, yeah, I held that. Like, no, nah, it takes it away. I like that it's only a limited people who can hold the Larry O'Brien, the Lombardi trophy or whatever. Like, oh, Patrick Mahomes is the only one. He cost some people's title. Like, Patrick Ewing. One of your Knicks, Manny, from back in the day, never got to hold the world title, even though he's considered an all-time great player. Just, you know, it hurts. It, it, it makes it, it that burns. more important that... It burns, it, don't it? <laughs> it burns. Charles Barkley, great player. Don't get to, Never got to hold that title. It means that much more when you see somebody actually carry that title. And the, that's what made Roman's title special, that it was the undisputed WWE Championship. Yeah. But like, and it's been touted way too many times in the last, how many, let's say four episodes of WWE television since WrestleMania, even WrestleMania, I'm tired of them saying New Era, man. I'm tired. I'm tired, yeah. <laughs> need to stop. Hey, I'll tell you this. I don't need to see Triple H for another two weeks, but I know he's going to show up on SmackDown because he has to get those tag titles. But I, that should be the end of him. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't want. I don't need to behold the kings of kings anymore. Okay, just send out Stephanie for about send a week. Stephanie on Friday. <laughs> so you get questioned if she's wearing her ring or not, Manny? Yes. You and Vince Russo. Investigation. You and Vince Russo are investigating this. Who? Vince Russo. Do you want to be on that side of history? Do you want to be on that side of history? Well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that they sound so dirty when he says it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I don't understand how whatever he says. Fuck him. Fuck him. I don't want to hear from. Him. There are two well, people he, who I know, don't want to hear from. Saying that he believes that during this new era, Triple H isn't going to make it because Triple H is going to be fired by TKO because because he seems they team he believes he's also involved in the mid scan. Well, he would know, bro. He would know. You yeah, know, he's worked he there for he he, he worked there thirty years ago. <laughs> well, apparently, according to him, he was still working there as a consultant. Remember, for the USA Network. Yeah, but that, that don't count. If you're at your house. They're like, hey, I don't even think that's true. Who cares? Who's yeah, paying him for that? Who's I'm paying really him for that? Me. Who's paying him for that? Many we work for the USA Network guest consultants. They listen to our show and they take our advice, but. I tell you this, I do not need to hear wrestling podcasters I do not listen to. Brian Hepner, because he has a podcast. Yeah, that's (laughs) where he made the shot at Samantha Irvin. He's disqualified for that. He's really Marcus, because I felt like that was that was the that was the kind of thing where someone actually went to him and asked about Samantha Irvin. I didn't think he had a microphone and started to talk into it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the podcast. So I cut him off. Bang. Done. Vince Russo for default, for just reasons. Just reasons. <laughs> if you don't know, just go with any show from WCW to TNA where you hear Fire Russo chants. You would know why. <laughs> right back. Just can't take anything he says serious. And I'm at the Garcia Twins as well. That there, you know that statement from Nikki talking about I was thinking about joining AEW is ridiculous. You can't just all of a sudden wake up. I want to join AEW when Tony Khan has not contacted you to at all, or you haven't contacted him. You can't be like you know I was this close in joining AEW. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. <laughs> there was no communication. Do you know that one time I accidentally clicked on that link and it was Dutch Mantel. <laughs> You know that keeps appearing in my feed now? Every time I go, I go onto the YouTube homepage, not my subscription page, my homepage, it suggests maybe I want to watch some more Dutch Mantel's but view on things. <laughs> I and think sometimes that... Focus, and sometimes, focus, I want to click on it. I mean, yeah. I want this man with a Yosemite Sam moustache and being... Look like this! I want to say about wrestling. <laughs> I enjoy... It. That's the worst part. I think there should be a new law in podcasting. If you were in particular business that you're podcasting about, you should be not allowed to podcast on it. I'm just saying. I'm talking about that for the NBA, wrestling, whatever. Because there are so many people where you just want you just roll your eyes. So you go, oh, I don't want to hear from them. <laughs> but I might click this link. Conan, want to keep it 100. I want to hear from the Disco Inferno. Oh yeah, that's more. That's another one that should be like, nah. Don't yeah. listen to that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe that's what we do. We release our top ten. Don't listen to them podcast. It's there because because Jeff Jarrett's got one, and then do you know what? Jeff Jarrett is mostly coherent on that one, so I allow him. He don't say yeah. outlandish. You know shit. what? Yeah, he's of all uh, the ones. He actually is the most reasonable. He yeah. Does. Uh, who else has got one? Uh, I don't listen to Eric Bischoff at all. No, it just sounds like, oh, let me talk about Tony Khan. Yeah, it's always about him versus Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah, like... And Conrad, actually, do you know what? I don't. I try not to listen to anything that Conrad has because all he tries to do is stir shit up anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> but no, Jeff Jarrett doesn't about... fight on that bullshit. But I'm tired yeah. of hearing Conrad. <laughs> uh, Kurt Angle's done. I think his is done. My favorite one and done is Dax. <laughs> but that was just him drinking tequila. <laughs> yes. And then talking about how much he loved pro wrestling, wrestling and his family. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but Dax makes the list. 
But I hate the ones that make me want to click the link and go, ooh, it's a spicy take. Yeah, the only the only ones I listen, the only ones I will actively go listen to is whoever, if the person is interested in Chris Van Vliet, because hmm. he knows how to interview people. But you know what? He's not a wrestler. He's not a yeah, wrestler. But he interviews wrestlers. That's what I like. So you know, yeah. He interviews wrestlers. But that's what I like. I, 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 don't, I don't want wrestlers doing it. Because it's always like, what's the game here? Where are you playing at? The, the, the Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Billy Jim podcast? I'm not watching this. I don't know. Oh, I, don't want watch, guys I, mean, I would want to watch it to see if I, 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 I take a counter anytime they, they look like they're about to say some racist shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what I do when I, uh, when I listen to... Yes, I listen to the Jim Cornette shit. It's funny to me. He's funny. He's funny! And he says race is a sexist thing and he doesn't realize it. And it's always like, I don't believe we're allowed to say that, Jim. <laughs> he goes, I don't give a fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> but he's funny and I enjoy it. I don't care. Is he right all the time? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do I recommend that for everybody? No, it's not healthy. But it is entertaining. Just so the, what, the Cultaholic YouTube channel also has a podcast bit on it. So like mm-hmm. uh, every Thursday they drop their uh, Cultaholic podcast. It's a no-go list if you don't. It, it's like classic The Sharpshooters where it went on for about three out, three to four <laughs> hours. <laughs> um, their WrestleMania edition of this, I saw it on my subscription feed, was six, uh, nearly seven hours long. I thought, how are you talking about wrestling this long? Yeah, how is it longer than the show? How is it longer <laughs> than the actual show? It was ridiculous. Yeah. I can't judge. I was in that boat. So I was just like, here we go. <laughs> um, I have a small, well, it's a huge announcement to make. Okay. I'm not leaving the show. Don't get your hopes up, people. Ah! No, no! my quest for power. My quest for <laughs> power. <laughs> uh, it's more. It's more. The untitled Manny and Marcus show may have. Uh, how would you say it? Um, a weird schedule over the next couple of weeks? Where um, I don't know if you've noticed. The key eye people may have noticed. I've been jumping off. Where during the watch alongs, I was jumping off screen a lot. It's because my dad is not well at the moment and. Uh, his cancer's come back, and um, it's playing. It's fuck. It's fucking with him, really. To be honest, and um, he's in hospital now, and uh, I don't know if I can make the time on time. But like, only the real ones that have probably got to the end of the show will hear about this anyway. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so there may there may be t- times where there's no show, even though like there was one to be scheduled. But um, it's just to keep the ones that want need to know. Not knowing what's going on, it's not like we're pulling back on what we're doing and pulling back on the amount of content we provide. It's just there's stuff going on at the moment for me. Um, I like this outlet, like it, it, I get to talk shit for an hour and then go back to real life in a, like after after we hit end stream, but it is tough at the moment. Um, but yeah, yeah, well said, Benny. And- I support all of your decisions to uh, take care of your personal matters more than the show. There, again, I have told you this in messages and before. There are more important things than wrestling and the show. This is fun, but you know, there's stuff that happens in real life where I want you to handle yourself, make sure you take care of yourself. And this also was the time. rare occasion where he was able to use his phone because it was charged. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, dare you! How oh, dare you! Serious phone took a jab at me. <laughs> It's what we do. It's the basis of this show. It is. It is. But you know what? I didn't see it right there. I didn't see it coming. I was blindsided, damn it. Blindsided. <laughs> yeah, so um, stick with us. There may be a thing to say there's no show on the community page, but if you don't see one set up around two hours before we normally go live, there probably isn't going to be a show. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely no show Saturday as well. Um, I will be doing the TNA Rebellion and um, 
but there will be uh, there might be something that come out. I'm not sure. I think oh, it's still I, I liked right? I like the, the I we haven't recorded anything. <laughs> no, no, but I do have I do have no the, you do you uh, have, you have an ETE episode. Yeah, you have an yeah. ETE episode that's coming out on the 20th. Uh <laughs> there's, so there's nothing tomorrow. We were supposed to record something today, but I'm not sure if that's gonna yeah. happen now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna tell you um, what I, I watched the uh, so the first time I watched it, I fell asleep, Eddie. I just probably something just be off the show. Second time, but I was into it. It was like this is a banger. <laughs> I didn't even get that part. I didn't even get that far. Do you know how far I, I got into? Do you know the opening sec, the opening video pack BT for it? I was like, I was yeah. dumb. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I need to do something. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to pause this midway through the match and be like, come back to it because I'm going to want to start it from the beginning all over again. Yeah. Psh. Hype though. I'll tell you off camera. I'll tell you off camera. Like, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Um, Can't wait for it, that content. If it ever does come out, we, we don't know. But it will eventually. I've got, I've got some content that might come out as well on. I'm like I'm going to WWE live and I'm gonna try and record that whole process because um I know that secretly I know people Google YouTube search that and um might find us <laughs> by accident now. Now that we have two hundred subscribers or whatever it is, thousand. It slowed down more because it slowed down. Yeah, hard. I know, I know. I it, looked it, at the graph and I was like, we well we you could tell that was WrestleMania season because it's like huge. Yeah. And then a big drop off. We just peaked. We peaked. <laughs> <clears throat> At work, somebody was like, so are you famous? And uh, early in the week, I was like, yes. Or last week, I was like, yes, I am. And now, at, I'm at the end of the week. They're like, Marcus, how would you like to be famous? It's over, man. 15 minutes is really fast. <laughs> Someone asked me that. And then I used that line that I told Eric before from that Sugar Free song. Um, you know my name. When I was a baby, I fell in a box of glitter, and I've been shining ever since. That could have, that could have never been more f- untrue in my life. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> Man, that shine Good wore time. off. <laughs> Someone took a towel and went like, "Nope." Oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> uh, Brother. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> these guys they're getting the black. This black is useless. It's like someone getting a WWE title today or any other time. It's like we became the inner the what's the uh Oyster County title, the inter- the international. Yeah. I know it's someone not, else holds it. It's the title. It's it's the Roderick Strong title. Have you seen it since, Manny? Have you seen it since? Apparently, with zero build, it's Kyle O'Reilly versus Finn oh Dynasty. God. I remember seeing that. Going to be a good match, but whatever. Whoopity do. Yeah, but the payoff, the the payoff to lead into this match happened on I think Battle of the Belts. Which I don't think anybody watched. <laughs> that aired on TV. <laughs> oh shit! Anyway, let's wrap up the show. And I also want to bring up a clip, Manny. Uh, I'll tell you off the air. That's something that I think we should use on the show. I think we're gonna get copyright for it, but it is funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've been Lord Manny Hayes. He's been Marcus the Grand Villani. There may be a show on Tuesday, Thursday, but if not. You know the reason why if you stuck around. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, like the video, subscribe. Where is all my stuff? And we <laughs> are out of here. We, ah! You know, these people don't look like they're trying. They don't look like they're trying. And it look like he's about to, You know, that smile on Jack Cable's face looks very rapey. He looks like he's going for the booty hole. He, he does. He does. And no, like, I, I, no, no, <laughs> not in my hometown, not in Montreal, <laughs> not in front of my wife. Cause he's young. Help me. <laughs> I never loved your name. Yeah, uh, we out. Peace. <laughs>